Hello Internet, I am the Hero of Julios once again with another One Piece chapter summary. This week's chapter is chapter 1004, Millet Dumplings, also translated to Kibidango. I may be referring to them as both just because, uh, well, both are fun to say. So, the chapter art is Chopper sharing some rumble ball candies with uh, a squirrel and a monkey as they're all stuffing their face with them. It's cute, it's a good callback to the rumble ball candies that... Odom mentioned in his SBS corner uh, way back. I, I forget which uh, issue it's in, but yes, it is canonical that there is a rumble ball candy that does not trigger the rumble, the rumble ball effect. But anyways, we're going to get straight into the chapter. This has been one of the most fun chapters to read because my prediction was correct, but also I was... It was better than I had even thought it was going to be. So, the chapter starts off with Speed uh, handing out millet dumplings to the other gifter, saying that they're from they're from Master Queen, and uh, he made them, and they got, like, special tonic in them that will heal you guys and help, you know, regenerate your wounds faster. And with that, she convinced, you know, a bunch of other gifters to eat the kibidango that... Tama's been making from her cheek. Uh, apparently, after everybody left her behind to go to Onigashima, because, you know, she's just a little girl, we can't actually send her, she convinced Speed and a couple other gifters to get her a boat, help her get to Onigashima so that she can fight too. So by working together, Speed, Daifugu, and Gaz Gazelle Man they all work together to feed as many dongos to everyone else as they can. Uh, Speed and Gazelle Man just going as fast as they can, handing them out. Uh, Daifugo actually goes and just force feeds other members of the crew because he doesn't have time. He was a jailer at um, Udon Prison, so a lot of samurai remember him. So he, he's kind of got to go a little faster about this than the rest. So after that, we cut to Frankie's fight with Sasaki, and it's actually going pretty well. We, we see that when Sasaki charges, the uh, Frankie Shogun is actually able to pick up and throw Sasaki in his Triceratops form. I would be, I would be worried to see what would happen, what Frankie would do without the Shogun in this scenario. There might be a lot more radical beams, which means Frankie would run out of cola a lot faster. So it's kind of dangerous either way, but it's it's a good thing he's got the Shogun. However, this is used against him as various uh, gifters grab him from his different you know different sides and hold him in place so that Sasaki can just charge right in. Mind you, the Frankie the cockpit that Frankie is in is right in the center of this. So as Sasaki is charging towards Frankie, ready to, you know, pierce right through, that's when he and Frankie hear, like, a commotion. They all turn, and you see Nami, Usopp, and Tama riding on the back of the lion dog, and there's an army of gifters behind them, and they're like, Frankie! Frankie's like, oh, good, you guys, help get these off me! And they're like, no, Frankie, you gotta save us! And <laughs> so you see this army chasing after the three of them, and Sasaki, you know, completely unfazed because he knows they have the superior numbers and he he's like see this is what you get we have the numbers this it's like this across the entire board no matter where you go on this island we've got we've got you beat and thomas says that's why i'm here i'm here to even the odds <laughs> and i love how tama has this look of determination on her face like hmm i'm here i'm gonna help i'm doing my job Nami and Usopp, just like what we saw with, um, back in Punk Hazard, where they said, you know, if the enemy has no will to fight, we'll, we'll get them, you know, we'll always attack an enemy with their back turned. The level of confidence those two get as soon as things go in their favor, like, they were crying, they were bloodied, they were, you know, Nami was ready to die against Ulti, but now the two of them are just like, nah. We got this. We're, we're so strong now. <laughs> yeah, the gifters come and they tackle the ones that are on Frankie, freeing him just enough to dodge Sasaki and let Sasaki, you know, ram through and take out a bunch of gifters himself. 
Then Usopp does exactly what I thought he was going to do. He does the Kibidango star and he just fires into the gifters' mouths and turns them over to Lord Tama's side. By the end of this, Tama is going to have more soldiers than Kaido if this keeps going this way. I don't know how many Smile Fruit users there are, but the number the, the number is changing rapidly and we're going to hit a point where well, I guess if you think about it, Tama could only make so many, so we probably aren't going to take over Kaido's entire army, but we will have taken enough to change the board. That go board mentioned in the last chapter, a lot of pieces are turning white. I still don't know how to play Go fully. I do know better than I did before. It's like it's like an advanced Connect 4 where well not Connect 4 but like the goal is to surround your opponent's pieces and the black pieces start like on the board so the better player or the stronger player needs to play with the black pieces or sorry, the, the weaker player starts with the black pieces. The other player plays as the white ones because they start outnumbered. This is really cool because it implies that Kaido is the weaker player here. That he is strictly numbers. We are, we are uh, more numbers than you. And with Luffy, or I guess Luffy's overall team, flipping the numbers over one at a time we are starting to reach a turning point in this fight. So with that, um, Sasaki gets knocked over, or sorry, Sasaki knocks over a bunch of gifters, and the battle starts turning to their side. Ulti shows up behind Nami, because she and Page One have not given up the chase, and <laughs> Nami just bolts her, just thunder lance right through the heart, and... Ulti gets up like it's nothing because dinosaurs are just that durable. Nami even mentions that she's going to need a bigger lightning bolt to do this. So what I think is going to happen is as this army of gifters grow, Nami, Usopp, and Tama are going to make their way up closer to the top. And perhaps Nami will take advantage of the storm that's going on up there and finish off Ulti. Not exactly sure how page one will get finished but that seems to be what this is leading up to. So anyways, as um, the armor division is slowly turning over to Tama's side, Sasaki takes his eyes off Frankie for too little too long, and Frankie just crashes down on him with a victory slash, as it's called, or something like that. It's something like that. And that's, that's where we leave off on Frankie and Sasaki's fight. Then the chapter goes to a more dark turn. See, I, I really enjoyed this opening part. Everything went exactly the way I thought it would. It was fun to watch. It's, it's great to know that Tama is actually using her power to its fullest extent. I'm going to take a guess that it doesn't work on real Zone Fruit users. Because if it did, Ulti and Page One would definitely be on their side by now. Maybe not Ulti because, you know, she wears a mask. But Page One, in his dinosaur form, has his mouth open. So Usopp had to have at least tried that. If not, they need to try it soon because I assume, I assume what everybody else assumes, that Kibidangos, do they work on zone type devil fruit users? Can Tama control Kaido? Can't that's this is where if it doesn't work on zone type users, does it work on Chopper? Because Chopper was a was an animal first, and that's who the Kibidango work on. So does Tama's Dango work on Chopper? It's like it's something we will never have to test because they're on the same side. But it's just something interesting to think about. Anyways, uh, going back to what I was saying about the dark turn. We then cut to Black Maria and Sanji. And it, it went pretty much how you'd expect. Sanji can't kick a woman. Black Maria has spider powers. She's got him. She's got him tied up in a web. 
and she's kind of just staring at him. But she tells him to call for Robin. You know, if if you talk to this specific member of my group, she'll have, you know, the ability to amplify your, you know, using like her little earpiece, she'll have the ability to amplify your voice across the entire island. Call Nico Robin. Bring her here. And Sanji asks, what are you going to do to her? Oh, you know, we're just going to break her legs and arms and stop her from running away and... We're going to get all the information we need out of her, and once we're done with that, we'll kill her. So, however many years that takes. Sanji, you did a great job. You took out all the male subordinates of Black Maria, but you you stood true. You stood true to your chivalry, and I gotta respect that, because any other member of the crew probably could have taken Black Maria down. But you can't, and I respect that. I feel like this is going to happen just like what happened in Ennis Lobby. Robin's going to show up. Robin's going to take over the fight. But Robin is with Brooke right now. So it might not be identical to what happened. It's either going to be Brooke shows up as support to help Robin by taking out like the minions and stuff. Or Brooke's going to take Sanji and run. Because Sanji is in a pretty bad state. Either way... It's going to be a Black Maria versus Robin showdown. And I look forward to it because even Sanji says you should not underestimate Nico Robin. And I, I love the trust that every member of the crew has in each other where Sanji knows that no matter which member of the crew Black Maria said to call, they could definitely take her. Sanji knows that if he really did go all out, he could take Black Maria down, but he can't. That's just against his code of honor, and I love that. That's It's it's the ultimate test for Sanji right now, because it's starting to become a risk to his crew member. And who knows, maybe Sanji will stick around and help not attack Black Maria, but defend Robin from her attacks. Like, you know, she shoots a web at Robin, Sanji blocks it by taking the web on him. Or... You know, she goes in for like a punch or something and Sanji blocks it like he did with Big Mom's punches. Sanji has been shown to block women attacks, as we saw during his fight with Califa. He just doesn't retaliate. So, I may be spending way too much time talking about this, but I really am looking forward to the Black Maria Robin fight because it has been so long since Robin's had a one-on-one. -on -one. Like, we haven't seen her fight since... Axe Mountain Boy, back all the way... What was his name? What was his name? Oh, he's, I just remember Axe Mountain. I, I'm going to call him that. It's been a while. That's what I'm trying to say. So it'll be fun to see that again. And I'm hoping... I'm hoping it's not, you know, a single slap and she's down. But I'm hoping that my, my original theory is still going to come true. Where... All the Straw Hats make their way all the way to the top, and they fight Kaido together as a crew. That's it for the Straw Hat progress. We saw Nami, we saw Usopp, we saw Frankie, and we saw Sanji. I assume in the next chapter, because there's no chapter next week, but there's a chapter the week after, we're probably going to catch up on Chopper, Jinbei, Robin, and Brooke. That way, we see what all the crew's been up to during Luffy and Zoro's fight against Kaido and Big Mom. So, as Black Maria is interrogating Sanji, she gets a call from King, because I guess they found the Red Scabbards, they know where they are. Law teleported them down to the treasure room. However, um, you know, King's busy right now. I don't know what he's busy with, because it doesn't look like he's fighting Marco, so he might be handling something else, or we're just not seeing Marco in this panel. But... Regardless, he can't handle the situation. Somebody else needs to do it. Black Maria responds with, Oh, I'm not too far from there. I'll go handle it. She starts walking away. Sanji's like, Whoa, hang on, wait. No, that's Kinemon. And uh, King's minion warns Black Maria that somebody else is down there. There's a tenth person who is helping the Red Scabbards, probably like tending to their wounds and stuff. 
we get a silhouette of this person and if you look carefully you can see that there is like a like a long strand coming off of them it could be an earlobe it could be some hair it could be a scarf but in order of most likely to least likely i think in most likely scenario it's gonna be Enaru. He's back from the moon. He wants revenge. He, as he was coming down from the moon, he saw that there was a flying island, and he was like, "Another sky island? Well, that'd be great to take over." And he goes closer, and he goes, "Oh, hey, those clouds are made of fire. This is an even better one." So he he goes down, and he's a part of this now, and he's gonna try and fight Kaido too. And then he's gonna see Luffy, and then he's gonna get scared because. Do you really think Eteru could take on Luffy now? But, so, as he's coming down, he's like, oh my god, wait, oh, that's that Luffy guy, I gotta avoid him. He hides in the throne room, and that's when, or not throne room, sorry, the treasure room, and that's when the red scabbards pop in, and Eteru's like, oh, and Eteru, out of the kindness of his heart, is like, oh my gosh, well, it's God's duty to protect his people, and since I am obviously God, I must do that, and he starts healing the red scabbards. Obviously, that's my first choice. The second, and slightly less likely, is Fukurokuju. He is the only other character we've seen with giant earlobes, and he may be more loyal to Wano than he is to Kaido. See, Fukurokuju has loyalty to the Shogun of Wano, but the Shogun of Wano got his head chopped off, by Kaido. And as far as we know, and say it with me everyone, Orochi is dead. With Orochi being dead, the only other shogun left to be loyal to is Momonosuke. So what's possible is he's either looking for the remains of what treasures there are and he was just going to book it and run, or he was going to play support for Kinemon and the others. He may be rallying together the other only one Bashu, the, the other ninjas. Because we haven't seen the ninjas interacting in this fight. We've seen the samurai. We've seen the samurai that were loyal to Orochi acting in this fight. But we have yet to see any of the ninjas doing so. So what I think might be happening is he's going to help heal the scabbards and get them back on their feet. Because now Kaido is a threat to Wano. Because he's just going to drop, you know, drop the base, take out the flower capital, and turn Wano into a pirate's paradise. And that's definitely not what anyone truly loyal to Wano would want. The third, and least likely but still on my list, is Hiori. She has the long hair, which would match up with the earlobe thing, and she has a reason to be in this fight. She may have even brought Momonosuke's sword with her so that he could use his father's sword. Or, much like how Zoro has Enma, he would give, she would give the sword to Kinemon to use. Regardless, there's definitely an ally helping, and I don't know who it is, but those are my top three picks. Aside from that, there is no new chapter next week. Uh, we're getting pretty close to 100 subscribers. I'm looking forward to that. I've got an idea for what I want to do for it now. And I can't really think of anything else to say. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. This is the Hero of Julios, Xing out.